James Webb Space Telescope, Interstellar Journey in Search of Extraterrestrial Intelligence. The James Webb Space Telescope is a space telescope developed by NASA, the European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency. It is destined to succeed the Hubble Space Telescope as NASA's flagship mission in astrophysics. JWST was launched on December 25, 2021 on an Ariane 5 VA-256 rocket. It is designed to provide an improved infrared resolution and sensitivity to Hubble and will allow for a wide range of astronomy and cosmology investigations including observations of some of the most distant events and objects in the universe, such as the formation of early galaxies. It allows the detailed atmospheric characterization of potentially habitable exoplanets. JWST's main mirror consists of 18 hexagonal segments of gold-plated beryllium mirrors, which when combined create a 6.5-meter diameter mirror, considerably larger than Hubble's main mirror, which has 2, 4 meters. Unlike the Hubble telescope, which observes in the near, visible, and near-infrared ultraviolet spectrum, JWST will observe in a lower frequency range, from visible light at long wavelength, red, to medium infrared. This will allow it to observe objects moving toward the big red, which are too old and too far away for Hubble to observe. The telescope must be kept very cool to see infrared without interference. So it will be deployed in space near the Sun-Earth Lagrange point, about 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. A large sun visor made of five layers of aluminum-coated space material called a captain will keep the mirror and instruments at a temperature below 50 K, minus 223 degrees Celsius. The telescope is named after James E. Webb, who was NASA administrator from 1961 to 1968 and played a key role in the Apollo program. Development began in 1996 for a launch that was originally planned for 2007, with a budget of $500 million. There have been numerous delays and cost overruns, including a major redesign in 2005, a broken sunshade during the implementation of a practice, a recommendation from an independent evaluation committee, problems with the Ariane 5 rocket and the telescope itself and communication problems between telescope and launch vehicle. The construction was completed at the end of 2016, when an extensive testing phase began. JWST was launched on December 25, 2021 12:20 Coordinated Universal Time by an Ariane 5 launch vehicle from Kourou, French Guiana, on the northeast coast of South America, and was released from the upper stage 27 minutes later. It has been confirmed that the telescope is receiving energy and, since December 2021, is currently traveling to its destination. Characteristics The James Webb Space Telescope has a mass of about half that of the Hubble Space Telescope. Its gold-plated beryllium main mirror is 6.5 meters in diameter, as opposed to the 2.4-meter Hubble Space Mirror, and with the light-collecting surface is six times the size of the Hubble Telescope. Beryllium is a very rigid, hard and light metal, often used in the aerospace industry, which is non-magnetic and keeps its shape precisely in an ultra-cold environment. The gold coating provides infrared reflectivity and durability. Mission The James Webb Space Telescope has four key objectives. To look for light from the first stars and galaxies that formed in the universe after the Big Bang, study the formation and evolution of galaxies, understand the formation of stars and planetary systems, to study the planetary systems and the origin of life. These targets can be achieved more effectively by observing in near-infrared light, rather than in the visible light of the spectrum. For this reason, JWST instruments will not measure visible or ultraviolet light as the Hubble telescope does, but will have a much greater ability to perform infrared astronomy. JWST will be sensitive to a wavelength range of 0.6 to 28 micrometers, corresponding to orange light and deep infrared radiation at approximately 100 kelvins or minus 173 degrees Celsius, respectively. James Webb will go to the end of darkness to discover how the oldest galaxies in the universe formed. This is a unique tool, said NASA Chief Bill Nelson. 
it's the most advanced technology, he said, adding that Webb, if successful, will reveal secrets of the universe that will be simply amazing. If not overwhelming, Webb will allow a quantum leap to understand who we are, how we got here, what we are and how everything has evolved, he said. The Webb telescope will make observations mainly in infrared light. With the help of its very large mirror, which is six times larger than the mirror of the Hubble Space Telescope, Webb will be able to detect infrared light from extremely faint distant stars and galaxies. This will essentially allow him to look back in time at some of the oldest lights in the observable universe. He will look through a keyhole in the sky. It will look back more than 13 billion years to capture infrared light from the formation of the first galaxy, about 250 million years after the Big Bang, which took place 13 and a half billion years ago, said the head of NASA. The interstellar journey of the James Webb Telescope we will find aliens more easily if we look for those who are already looking for us. We've been looking for intelligent forms of extraterrestrial life for 50 years, but we haven't found anything. It's time for a new approach. Two astrophysicists have proposed a new strategy for finding intelligent extraterrestrial life. We should point the James Webb Telescope in the direction that if there is intelligent life, there is a good chance that it has already found us. We are primarily interested in answering the question, where are they in the sky? Last week in the journal Astrobiology, one of the methods by which we look for Earth-like planets in the universe is called the transit observation technique. In short, we are watching the moment when that planet passes between us and the star around which it orbits. The moment of transit can be seen when the brightness of the star decreases slightly. With the help of the data obtained here, we can determine the size of the planet and the composition of its atmosphere. Transit observation is a very effective technique that has helped us discover thousands of exoplanets, which has led Heller and his co-author, Ralph Pudritz, to suggest that we may not be the first to use this technique. Heller and Pudritz calculated where in the universe there should be intelligent life forms in order to observe the transit of the Earth around the Sun. They call this the Earth's Transit Zone or ZTP. Heller and Pudritz propose to deconstruct the transit observation technique to find out the best place to start looking for intelligent forms of extraterrestrial life inside the ZTP. The two researchers thought that if the aliens were at least as advanced as we were, then they might try to get in touch with us. Aliens observing Earth's transit are more likely to discover that our planet is habitable and inhabited. If the intelligent forms of extraterrestrial life are randomly distributed throughout the universe, then those in the ZTP have a greater chance of detecting and contacting us. The extraterrestrial life search program has been around since the 1960s, but researchers are currently planning to launch another, larger and better funded program called the Breakthrough Initiative. It is an initiative promoted by Stephen Hawking and funded by Russian billionaire Yuri Milner which will use radio telescopes on Earth to listen to the signals transmitted by intelligent forms of extraterrestrial life in the universe. If we can't find evidence, we're going to start assuming the aliens aren't there. The thing is, the universe is very large, and we need to think carefully about where we should start our search. Heller and Pudritz hope that their strategy will be a good approach to solving the starting point problem. To do this, the two researchers compiled a list of 82 ZTP solar systems that could have habitable planets. There are many signals we can look for, from laser pulses to possible megastructures. And Heller and Pudritz's work gives us a good start. Of course, when it comes to the search for extraterrestrial life, there is always a problem, the Fermi paradox. This is a contradiction between the number of planets we estimate to have extraterrestrial life and the fact that so far we have not been able to find life on other planets. Heller says the Fermi paradox is very important, but that there are more explanations for our failure to contact extraterrestrial life. Aliens may be advanced, even very advanced, but not yet capable of interstellar travel. Or maybe there is absolutely no alien race capable of such travel, Heller told me. Heller also referred to a theory that extraterrestrial life surrounds us, but it is able to hide its presence so that we cannot find it.
In any case, we will soon begin to look for intelligent life forms around distant stars, and most importantly, we have a starting point. Search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Artifacts from the solar system. Extraterrestrial artifacts have not yet been found. In the early 20th century, American astronomer Percival Lowell claimed to see man-made channels on Mars. These would have been convincing evidence of intelligence, but Lowell's features were actually optical illusions. Since 1890, several limited telescopic searches of foreign objects near Earth have been made. They investigated the so-called Lagrangian points, stable locations in the Earth-Moon system. No large objects were seen, at least up to a few dozen meters. Search for extraterrestrial intelligence. The most promising scheme for finding extraterrestrial intelligence is the search for electromagnetic signals, especially radio or light, that can be transmitted to Earth from other worlds. Either inadvertently, in the same way that Earth broadcasts television and radar signals in space, or as a deliberate beacon signal. The law of physics implies that interstellar travel requires enormous amounts of energy or long travel times. Sending signals, on the other hand, requires only a modest expenditure of energy. And messages move at the speed of light. If an extraterrestrial civilization came to Earth millions of years ago, the Earth is estimated to be 4.5 billion years old. There may be no signs of their visit, say the study's authors. Researchers are referring here to some previous research that suggests that we may not be able to detect evidence of such extraterrestrial visits. It is also possible that the aliens passed by Earth much more recently, but they decided not to visit us. The authors of the study call this possibility the Aurora Effect, after the novel Aurora by Kim Stanley Robinson. Moreover, extraterrestrial civilizations may not want to visit a planet that is already alive, say the study's authors. To assume that he would like to visit us would be just a naive projection of a human tendency by which we equate expansion with conquest. The study took all these considerations into account and the calculations assumed that extraterrestrial civilizations would only settle on some of the habitable planets they encountered. According to researchers, if there were enough habitable planets, then the aliens could have spread so far, easily, throughout the galaxy. For now, researchers urge us not to be discouraged by the lack of any evidence for the existence of extraterrestrial civilizations. It simply came to our notice then. It just means that the habitable planets are probably rare and difficult to access, said Carol Nellenbach. Over the next few years, it is expected that we will be able to detect and observe other potentially habitable planets much more easily as new telescopes are launched into space. The Kepler telescope played an important role in finding the exoplanets that could host life in our galaxy. The Hubble Space Telescope and the James Webb Space Telescope are still searching.